All right, in this video, we are going to install a CUDA 11 QDNN 8 GPU, in this case an Ampere, a NVIDIA RTX A6000 GPU for use with TensorFlow. We're going to install all the drivers ourselves and we're gonna do this from scratch. Now there is an easier way to do this. You can use Conda and it will actually put uh, CUDA and QDNN on there for you. Now, why am I doing this? Because I'm a glutton for punishment? No, if you want the latest version of TensorFlow, then that is, that's what you have to do because currently, as of February 2021, now this changes constantly, but the but as of February 2021, the latest version of TensorFlow, which is 2.4, is not available on the Conda archive. So if you want that version instead of the 2.2 .2 that is available, then this is what you need to do. And this is the update for CUDA 11. I have earlier versions of this video. And it's particularly good if you have an Ampere GPU to be installing CUDA 11 and TensorFlow 2.4 because those support it the best. So let's get to it. This is the TensorFlow GPU support page. If you scroll down, they've got Linux support, they've got Windows support. Now, the Windows instructions are deceptively short. But let's go ahead and go through this process so that we can install TensorFlow using pip install and get the absolute latest versions. So up here where it talks about hardware requirements, you do need a CUDA card with compute 8.0 or higher. And this is the list of things that, that you need to install. So I am going to start with the NVIDIA GPU drivers. We'll launch this. And you have to choose your graphics card. I am running a NVIDIA RTX A6000. So for that, I'm gonna do NVIDIA RTX Quadro. I am then going to choose NVIDIA RTX Series. It's, there's really only one of those right now, so that's, that's my card. Windows 10, and let's go ahead and search, and then we'll download it. This part, it does let you skip and simply go to the download. NVIDIA already knows who I am, so we're going to skip that part. You can see that it begins downloading here. Now, most likely you have some form of an NVIDIA driver already on your computer, or you wouldn't even be seeing your screen, or you might be using the default that Windows picked for you. So this, this is good to have on your computer regardless. I'll go ahead and fast forward through this part. All right, it's downloaded. We'll go ahead and run it. Yes. Okay. It unzips itself and will install shortly. Okay, just about there. Notice this is version 461. These continue to increase. So you want to install the latest one of this regardless. We'll do agree and continue. Express is perfectly fine. And if you're interested in performance for video games, this is the exact same driver that you're going to install. For machine learning, this is just the low level, the lowest level of the pyramid that we're building. And we fast forward through this part. My screen recorder tends to get a little mad through graphics dr driver install, so you might see some flicker. All right, it has finished installing. Let's go ahead and close this. And we'll go back to the TensorFlow instructions. So the next thing is the CUDA toolkit. This is very important. This is essentially giving you the ability to use your GPU as a general compute device. So let's go ahead and open that. And they've got all of these here. You want, you definitely want CUDA 11. 
I'm going to just install the latest of this. Your major number is important. So if CUDA say goes to 12 and TensorFlow is still asking for 11 back on its, its main page that you see here, it says CUDA 11 for TensorFlow greater than 2.4. And we're seeking to install the latest version of TensorFlow. That's the entire point of going through all of this trouble is we're getting the latest version of TensorFlow beyond what the nice, easy Conda GPU install would do. And this is really not that bad. We'll be here as quick as possible. So we want CUDA 11. The minor versions I've not found have much issue, but if you see them calling for a minor version here, then you probably want to get that minor version. So we're going to go with the latest, December 2020. We want Windows, x86-64. In my case, I can't imagine, this doesn't work on 32-bit, so that would not be an issue. We'll use Windows 10. I prefer the EXE local. And we're going to download it. It's not that big, but we'll go ahead and fast forward through this part. Take that back, 2.8, it is pretty big, 2.8 gigabytes. Okay, I canceled that because I actually have it loaded already just so the video can go quick, but that would have taken about 15 more minutes. When you run it, it brings up this. So we're going to install it. We're gonna use that temporary location, which is fine. It unzips. We'll fast forward through this. All right, just about done. And now the installer should begin. Checking system compatibility. You could run into some issues here if you don't have modern enough hardware. I'll agree and continue. Express is perfectly fine. And now it's going to install this. I'll go ahead and fast forward through these parts. Now notice it is saying configuring Visual Studio. It does install part of Visual Studio Express Edition. I tend to install Visual Studio Express. You can do it before or after this install. It doesn't particularly matter. Some machine learning libraries and packages will require it. For example, if you're using NVIDIA StyleGAN 2, that does require it because they do have custom kernels in there. So be aware of that. I am not going to install Visual Studio during this demonstration, but I always keep it installed. When you do install it, make sure you install the C++ platform because that is, that's the main point. And Microsoft doesn't default to that anymore. They'll just install, I think, .NET if you leave it to its own devices. And you don't need .NET. Okay, so we'll do next. And I don't need to see the samples. So we will close that. Now we'll go back to our instruction sheet. The next thing is CUPTI. We do have to do something with this path, but it was installed when we put CUDA, so that's fine. CUDNN is critical. This is what most people forget or get the wrong path, and at least my students anyway, and run into problems. So let's go ahead and download this. Now we're going to use 8.04. You want a version 8, which is the latest. Let's go ahead and open that. CUDNN. I agree to be ethical. And we're going to do 8.1. We're going to go ahead and get the latest for CUDA 11. Usually I grab the latest of the minor versions unless they are really making a big deal out of it. But CUDA 11 and CUDNN 8 in February 2021, that's the latest, and that's what we that's what we need. Now you're thrown with a myriad of options here. We want QDNN library for Windows x86. So it's going to download that. That is actually pretty short. It's 665 megabytes. I mean, at least by modern standards, that's pretty short. I will fast forward through this. Okay, just about done. Now this is not a fancy installer. This is a zip. So it's got that little CUDA directory in there. Now where you put that, you're gonna put that in a directory on the root of your hard drive. 
and I prefer to just follow the instructions for Windows if we go back to the bottom. They suggest putting it in Tools, CUDA bin, and that's kind of the path of least resistance, so let's put it right there. So I'm going to open Windows Explorer here, and I'm going to go into Drive C, and I'm going to create a new folder called Tools, and then I am going to move that zip file over. And now it's unzipping into that directory with CUDA. And then the critical thing here is we're going to create these paths that are defined. These paths are how TensorFlow actually finds it. And this actually affords you great flexibility. You can change these paths. You could just copy these all into a batch file. And if you're having to support, say, CUDA 10 and CUDA 11 simultaneously, now supporting CUDA 10 on Ampere, like I have here, is not advised. But if you did need multiple versions, that would be the best way to do it, because as soon as you change the path, then TensorFlow is going to use the other one. Now, if you're using the Conda Easy Install, it manages all these paths for you, and that's basically how it's able to switch between those. But let me bring up environmental variables, edit system environmental variables. We're going to bring that up here. I am going to go to environmental variables. I like to do this at the system level, so I'm going to do the path down here, and we're going to edit it. And, and it's close enough to out of the way. You can see that CUDA put a couple of these in here. And what you have to be careful of is notice CUDA V1112, this is V110, so we have to do a little updating. The way that I like to do this, just to be sure that I absolutely get these, is I will copy them from Explorer. I'll go find them. So the, the bin for 11.2 is already here, but these other ones, I am going to have to add those myself. So cup TI is the next one. It's under program files and then NVIDIA GPU toolkit, CUDA 11.2 and then extras, cup TI and lib 64. So we're just gonna copy that and add it into my my path and there it is we have a few more that we have to add and you have to add all of these or it will not work so the next one is they need the include this is for visual studio compiles which even though you're using python is going to it's, it's going to use that so we need to find the include path that's where all your header files are for c plus plus so back at the v11.2, include, there they all are. So we'll copy that and we will put that into the path as well. And then I think we've got one last thing. Yeah, the and, and this I made exactly the same so we can just copy that. That's ku DNN for deep neural networks. And there you have it. We're gonna click OK. OK, oops, this OK. Then that OK, make sure you get all the OKs so that this is actually there. Now, now I am going to create a special environment. So I am going to create a Conda environment for this. We will use Python 3.8, and I'm not going to name it TensorFlow. I'm going to name it TF-Latest. I always keep that environment on my computer with the latest Python. And so 3.8 works well with TensorFlow 2.4. I'll go ahead and fast forward through this. 
Now we want to activate it. Okay, you can see from the little prompt, it is active. So now I'm going to do pip install tensorflow hyphen GPU. Okay, this installs the entire GPU package of TensorFlow. It works just fine with the CPU as well. So you can, if it doesn't detect a GPU, it's going to use the CPU. If I want to benchmark GPU and CPU side by side on the same computer, what I will typically do is install the CPU only version side by side in a different environment. And now it's installed. And I'm going to go ahead and run this in. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a Python environment. And I'll do import tf as, or import TensorFlow as tf. Now notice this. This is really good. Successfully open dynamic link library one of the CUDA things. So that's good. We're going to print tf.version241. Perfect. Now I want to detect the GPU. I don't remember this offhand. I'm going to go to my course website because I've got some handy code there. If I go to my course website, T81558, and I go to install, and then we'll just go ahead and use this, this one. At the very, very bottom, there's this code, GPU is available or is not available. We can use basically this. So we need tfconfig. We can basically just run this. If it returns true, then the GPU is successfully installed. And notice all those things that it loaded and true. That is very, very good news. So the GPU is now installed and ready to go. At this point, I would probably install Jupyter Notebook. And that is... I cover that in, in other videos. But this is how you do the base install if you want to get the GPU up and running completely from scratch and not rely on Conda. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay up to date on all the latest with deep learning and other projects that I do with artificial intelligence.